Now, how does it go for you that you tend to discriminate against women at the job site? Uh, at the corporate level, you seem to think women are not competent enough, but I guess now your thinking should be changing because the new world order says women are the in thing now. You take an analysis of what the situation is ac across the globe. Uh, a lot more women are occupying top chief executive positions, they are heads of corporate organizations, uh, large corporations and multinationals, etc. And then you know that women have arrived, not necessarily only to compete with the their other counterpart sex, but also because they have the competence. And one person who has had over 20 years in management, consultancy, business advisory services, uh, who has been championing the cause for women to also be at the forefront of enterprise, as well as being head of uh, heads of uh, corporations, large multinationals, et cetera, and, and really taking the bull by the horn and doing things for themselves is Ruka Sanisi. Um, she moved to Ghana, I believe, some 10 years ago from the UK, et cetera, having traveled across the world. <laughs> and uh, I just can't imagine where she's, she's not been to. And Ruka is my guest for the morning. Ruka, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Right. Nice to meet you. And, uh, and uh, you've been talking about women, women, mm. women, females, females. So mm. What about it? Mm. I mean, we've heard about Beijing. Aren't we mm. tired? You can never be tired of mm. women because, you know, we make up half of the world's the, um, um, population. You can never be tired of us. And I think our issue really is why do we talk about women is because we feel that they're an important part of um, a birth story, the global birth story, and we want to ha have more opportunities um, mm. for women to actually demonstrate their talents and their giftings mm. so that they're actually making the contribution that they can make to Ghana's, Africa's economic potential. So we can. There's an interesting talking. point you make. Mm. Uh, if you get to take a look at currently what mm. the scope is mm. and what the perspective is from from the corporate world about how competent women are, mm. you're told that they're mm. really competent, mm. and you can see it from the position mm. that they occupy, exactly. etc. Yes. Uh, what do you think are the greatest mm. challenges that they mm. face? I think women face many challenges. Chief amongst is in the issue about you know balancing work and life. Um, you know, you may have a vision, a dream, you, know, you, you want to be in the C-suite, but you, know, you also want to manage your family well, you want to you know, be a great wife and a wonderful mother. And how do you do all of those things um, in a way that is pleasing to you? So I think um, the greatest challenge is work-life balance. But at the same time, there is also that challenge and the expectation that women are not necessarily supposed to be um, advancing in the workplace. You're not supposed to be that great entrepreneur because you know, if you do that, you're, you're neglecting your other role, you know, your domestic role. So women are battling you know, um, th 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 those issues, the expectations of society of women, uh, as well as their own desire to be a mother, to be a wife, as well as um, be a successful um, C-suite member or entrepreneur. Mm. Mm. Right. Decades ago, mm. I don't know, I should say maybe a decade or some few years ago, yes. um, things about tradition, customs, etc., mm. would have been said to be inhibitors. Mm. And mm -hmm. so they were hindrances mm. towards women progressing yes. progressively yes. In, 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 mm. in, in, in the corporate world. Mm. Do we still see some of these as phenomenon? I think most definitely we do. You know, that's why, you know, um, Cheryl Sandberg you know, recently wrote that book, you know, um, Leaning In. Those. Um, issues, you know, negative issues in the corporate world about women are still there because traditionally the c suite was run by men and it, it's like having, um, you know, you have um, people who are, um, you know, short, short adults, I, I don't want to call them dwarfs, but you know, if, you know, people who are like, they have breast defects, so they're very small. Now, the way we build houses, you know, midgets, not necessarily exactly, midgets. you know, the way we build houses, the cars that we drive are made for people like you and I, who have average height, same thing in the boardroom. Right? It's really ordinarily men that you know, are the CEO, CFO, CMO, CTO, uh, and whatever. So when women come in, they don't know what to do with us. The MD of Transit Chartered in Nigeria is a woman, and Gola Deshola, and she gave a story, told a story once about how when they were talking about health benefits for the C-suite and, 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 and the board, they said, OK, you know, they will help give them support for like prostate cancer. And she said, well, I will never get prostate cancer. So what then happens to me? Are you saying that because I'm a, I'm a woman, I will not benefit from, you know, this, you know, this health benefit? So she then got them to slip in, you know, issues of, you know, um, fibroids or, or, or whatever. So those issues, the negative issues of, you know, 
that society imposes on us as a woman that restricts our growth in the workplace, in corporations, and as business owners, this, they're still there. Although I think in the urban enclaves, you know, mm. in Accra, Lagos, Joburg, Nairobi, uh, wherever, it's in, they, they're getting minimized, but they, they are still there. Mm. Yeah. In, 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 in many um, developed economies, mm. so to yes. speak, yeah. um, access to things like finance mm. and credits mm. and, 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 and the policies or mm. the regulations are there for mm. anybody who thinks yes. he, he or she has the talent and mm. the abilities to progress. Mm. And so you want to set up your business, you mm. can always get access, etc. Mm. Mm. Even though even in the more developed mm. world, mm. there, still, there still seem to be that yes. contention about whether yes. women are given enough chance, etc. Yes. Do you think that um, at any level, mm. women, mm. sometimes when they want to grow their businesses, mm. uh, would, would still need to scale bigger heights? Mm. To, to, and, and, and I've, uh, well, for example, we have subsistence level, mm. and you need to build your business to a certain mm. level. What yeah. does it mean? Okay. Ordinarily, we always people always say access to finance is the biggest challenge that you know women entrepreneurs face or any entrepreneur faces, in particular women. Mm. I don't agree. I think your biggest challenge is to have a compelling vision, mm. and um, and really understand where you want your business um, to get to. Once you you have to think deeply about your business. You know, if you say you know you are um, a fashion designer, a PR company, you know, how far do you want to go? In which countries do, do, do you want to operate? So it's, for me, the biggest challenge is to actually think deeply. When Bill Gates sat down a couple of years ago to think about Microsoft, you know, he was thinking about innovative things, things that had never been done before. He thought deeply. Same thing with Steve Jobs. Oprah Winfrey, a black woman in America at that time, to do what she's done. It took deep thinking. So for me, it's not about, because if you can have access to finance and be, and use it for the wrong things and still be bankrupt, if you don't have a vision, a compelling, a strong vision to match um, that finance that, you, that you're seeking, it will, it, will, it will be wasted. So the other things to think about, how to scale your business, your, your, client, your clients, after you've thought about the, um, the, the vision, who are your preferred clients? I'm sure it's not everybody that you want to be on your show, Roland. There's some preferred interviewees that you want, like Ruka, for instance, right? Yes. You know? <laughs> exactly. You cut it. <laughs> exactly. So it means that you, you know your own brand, you understand your own brand, and you know the kind of people that you want on your show. Those are your preferred clientele. And then marketing and communications. Where do we market this Joy News you know, um, jo um, TV news show? What kind of, how do we know who to contact? You know, if we say we want people like Ruka, how do we contact people like Ruka? Who do, how do we know that, you know, um, how do we market that you know we're available for you to come and be on our show? Issues about your staff and your own leadership qualities. Are you shouting at and screaming at your staff? So as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, you have to think about all, all, all of these things. It's not just oh, I want to be, you know, the next Bill Gates. You know, I want to be a disruptive company. I was at a show the other day as, as a judge for entrepreneurs, and they said I want to be you know, we are the next disruptive IT company in Ghana. I'm like, oh yes, <laughs> I've heard that before. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so now we need to take the thing to the next level. And okay. uh, as a people, mm -hmm. we, we say that we always copy from the best. And, and, yes. and, and Africa is a very tortuous terrain for mm. anybody to operate in. Mm. Uh, is it more difficult for women and women entrepreneurs? To operate in Africa. Mm. Yeah. In, in economies and circumstances like ours. Yes, I think it's difficult for everybody, but because of, of, our, of our cultural practices and cultural expectations, it probably is a lot more difficult um, um, for women. Notwithstanding, that doesn't mean that women still you know, cannot s succeed in this economy. It just takes a lot of ten tenacity. Um, you, know, t you being able to just don't take no for an answer. Just because somebody says no doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You know, you are driven um, by, you know, b by your goals. So, I mean, the terrain poses um, peculiar challenges, but it also poses peculiar opportunities. You know, the um, head of Berkshire Hathaway, one of the, I forget his name now, um, one of the um, billionaires is, is an American chap. He says that for him, he makes the most money, right, during times of recession. When everybody else is, you know, hoarding money and whatever, he's like, he's buying stocks. Even Donald Trump shit. said that too. Exactly. So these, um, as an underdeveloped economy, as an emerging economy, 
they have peculiar challenges and to doing business, to growing your business, but they're also peculiar opportunities which you have to look for, right? So, you know, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the woman now, uh, mm. we need to make sure that you are in a position to mm. cut across and, 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 and go through all these barriers. Once mm. you've gone through the barrier, mm. how do you make sure you shine? How, mm. how do you project yourself out there? Mm. So many ways. Um, issues about personal branding comes into it. Issues of your leadership skills, you know, developing your speaking skills. Um, not only for things like conferences, but mm. you know, when I'm sitting in front of you, Roland, am I actually doing a good job of projecting my, my brand image and my personal brand image to the world? Um, so even though you may have a, a, a great business, if when people hear you on radio or they see you on TV, they, they're not really understanding what you're saying or you're not challenging them in any way, you're not persuading them to come and you know, purchase goods and services from you, you know, it may not help um, your, 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 your own brand. So there are, and also issues of marketing, advertising, PR, you know, where you do your advertising matters. It should be in, a pl in places where your preferred clientele are going to see, there's going to be visibility. You know, public relations, choosing the right TV shows to come for interviews for, all, all of those kind of things. Um, those are the, are the other features of your business strategy which you need to pay uh, attention to. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Do you think mm. that women will get a lot more hard time mm. um, trying to project themselves out there compared to males? I, mean. I think. Um, and why, 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 should, why, why, why would you think that would be a situation? Potentially, like that? yes. In our environment. Yeah, I mean. potentially, yes, because of the prejudices. You know, because you know we're thinking that these roles are traditionally held by men. So a woman has come, and you know she's trying to be like a man, or you know the, we will may pick on um, issues of dress or look at the way she's dressed and you know blah 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 and you know the cleavage is showing that this is you know, how does she get into that position? So it's contingent upon you, therefore, um, to think of you know that's why I said you have to think deeply about your business because mm. if you think deeply ab 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 about your business. You will ensure that you project yourself, you know, um, your your visual appearance as well as what you know what it is that that you know what is in here mm. are all aligned to minimize any criticism, any unwanted and unwarranted criticism, you know, um, about yourself. Yeah. From the home, the way mm. we're brought up, yeah. the way we're spoken to, the way mm. we're educated, etc. Mm. It's as mm. if the whole society is predisposed towards making. Mm. the male, the dominant mm. factor mm. in our society and mm. even in civilization, yeah. you can say yeah, absolutely. Uh, Darwinism would even mm. be projecting all that. Mm. But w would you say it's mm. even more difficult to have a lot more uh, people getting the right role models and say, we need coaches, etc. Mm. And so mm. we need the right people to be coaching us. Mm. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, how, uh, how would it work for women? Mm. I think most definitely um, we all need mentors, we all need coaches. Mm. There, there are people that perhaps um, we know are doing things better than us that we want to learn from. It doesn't mean that you just have one mentor or one coach. Mm. You can have various. You know, you could have a, a mentor for you know, a financial mentor, and be somebody who's like you know for whom affairs, marriage mentor or, or coach or, or, or whatever it is. There's room for that because we don't know it all. You can read all the books in the world. You can you know read about Bill Gates. You can read all about Oprah. Um, but there's nothing like being able to pick up the phone and you know, say, Roland, I need to have a chat. Or can we meet for coffee somewhere? Um, and I think women, because we're trying to balance work and home, um, we really do need to have you know, uh, coaches and mentors. And also as a, as, as a business, um, as, as, as a businesswoman or entrepreneur, I mean, I'm a business coach and um, it's not a role that I take lightly. Mm. And it is, um, it's also you know, not an airy fairy role. Somebody may say, well, what's a business coach? What does a business coach do? Well, let me just, you know, what is a coach? It's a vehicle that takes you from A to Z. You want to go to Timbuktu, this from, from Accra. There is a route. You may have to stop along the way, you know, service the engine or whatever it is, and put oil in the car, put um, water in, in the car at certain intervals. You pause to eat you know, certain food, make sure that you have enough liquids because you're going to be driving, the hot sun in the desert, all of that kind of stuff. You know, when, when do I, how much sleep do I need? How much, you know, whatever. All of those things come into it. Like a business coach as well. You know, okay, you want to start this business, and I'm going to interrogate the logic of that business. Is it a viable you know, business? How will you actually make money from it? Or is it just a dream? Right. So we, will, we, we do a lot of analysis to actually help you to know, understand better the ways and means. 
you know, it's not just about, you know, opening a shop somewhere, you know, saying, you know, uh, uh, or an office somewhere and spending $10,000 furnishing the office, then $40,000, you know, r renting the office. It's much more than that. You know, it's, it's, it's about God has given you a gift and a talent and you are partnering with God in that business. You, you need to do it right because there are people waiting, you know, to be your customer and your client if you give them you know, a good enough reason, you know, them to be that. So you need to have a coach, a mentor, to help you, to, you know, to bring out those giftings professionally out of you, mm. yeah. No, before you even have the coach and a mentor, you, mm. then you need to have an encounter. Mm. And I know you have had encounters with many females, etc., mm. and mm. Who, who perhaps may have had this idea, mm. this dream. Mm. But then you tend to look at the, the posture and uh, the demeanor of the person. You say, well, not again. Mm. How do you then need to make sure well, females and mm. those who would have the dream but mm. would need to have the drive as well? Mm. You see, you are, the drive comes when you fully understand the potential of what it is that you want to do. It starts with, a, you know, a, with an idea, and you, know, you get excited, oh, I could do this, I could do that. But once you actually understand the, the bigger potential, the bigger impact that your business idea you know, mm. um, could have, that's what drives you. Mm. That's what drives me um, to do what I, what I do. I spent 20 years in the corporate world working you know, in, in 16 countries, and, and um, I, I, I realized that you know, women or, or all people have, have, have a lot to offer. And when I meet a, 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 a potential client and I hear her idea, what drives me is the potential of that idea. And the people in the world, the, the potential clients that, 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 that she could impact through her business. Mm. And once we kind of like um, expose, I expose that to her in you know, mm. two different ways and tell her the responsibility the leadership and the strategic responsibility that that idea has on her, that be, it, it begins to do something, you know, to your spirit, and it, it motivates you. It, it, it that's why you, you know, one a.m. You're, you're still working sometimes. <laughs> so I ask that question because yes. um, in many of my interactions and sometimes mm. my acquaintances and yes. well, even my colleague females I've yes. been in class with, etc. And yes. sometimes you see fine female, yes. perhaps a manager somewhere, yes. but comes forward and talks and. The woman sucks, and you say, "Really? Yeah. Is is that your best approach? Mm. Because mm. your outward or aesthetic appearance mm. give gives a, a vivid mm. description and and pe perception in the mind yeah. of, of, Which, of, 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 of of a second person that gets yeah. around you, yeah. and that also tends to give them any indication as to whether yeah. they will need to give mm. you some assistance mm. or mm. have confidence in you mm. or mm. believe in you, etc." Mm. Mm. So I think what you're getting out there, Roland, is, is the issue about, you know, aesthetically somebody looks, you know, looks good and whatever, and then you ask them to talk about um, a particular, let's say they're an economist, right, so-called economist, and then you, know, you want for, some analysis on what's happening in Ghana today, what's happening in, in Kenya today, and they don't have a lot of substance. Mm. Now, that, that shows you that they haven't thought deeply about, mm. ab about their work. You know, they are working at a very shallow level, right, and... Um, you know, for me, that is you know, very, very, it's, uh, it's, it's an unfortunate situation because there's no point looking good if you're not going to manifest that goodness in what it is in that you do. Mm. Um, so for, when I work with um, women, I also, that's one of the things that we work at, that's what we call executive coaching, in ensuring that you are credible, in ensuring that you have authority as a business person, as a CEO, you know, you have that knowledge because it is that knowledge that people are buying, not necessarily what you look like physically. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, th th there's a question that's coming up. Okay. Now, at the at the home or from mm. the home, mm -hmm. and and we're talking about the African home, the Ghanaian home, etc. Okay. Uh, the, the the upbringing is mm. is always about how everybody needs to go to school, etc. Yes. W what should be the training that should come from the parents, the guardians, mm. the home mm. that would esp especially bring mm. out the innate qualities uh, of, mm. of of really mm. the, not only the male but mm. also the female as well mm. looking at the fact that out there mm. it is very tortuous it, mm. it is difficult for mm. the for the female but mm. well, if i can take my own example um my father played a very very critical role in our lives um he insisted on our education he insisted on our higher education my parents are actually muslims and um you know 
one degree wasn't enough. You had to get a master's. If you wanted to get a PhD, you know, fine, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll support you. Whereas um, my mother and my stepmothers, it wasn't, you know, they were traditional women. It wasn't really necessary. Oh, this now, why is he pushing these girls? You know, to just go off, you know, and get married. And um, so from my own personal view, I, I had no qualms from, from, from day one about um, dreaming and, and wanting to pursue my dreams and pursue my mm -hmm. dreams because to me, you know, it was the norm. I think for parents, um, we shouldn't limit the vision of our children. Um, whereas we have to bring them up within you know, certain parameters, um, you know, cultural values, all of those kind of things. Um, at, at, at the same time, we need to understand that our children are custodians and God, they are they're creations of God in our custody. And we have a responsibility to bring out those innate talents and giftings that they have, girl or boy, so that they can shine in the future as and, 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 and be somebody. Mm. Mm. Because in a typical uh, African setting, yes. well, the female is supposed mm. to be the most prayerful and, and has a tendency to be yes. having all these visions and things mm. about mm. how his mm. uh, her life should be and, mm. and those around her, etc. Mm. Mm. And so you grow up, you're supposed mm. to be a very good mother. Yes. You're supposed to, well, if you have any entrepreneurial ideas at, at all, nurture them alongside all that. Yes. How then you have mm. the drive, mm. you, you, you are a top ent entrepreneur, etc. Mm. Mm -hmm. How would you tend to manage all these inferences in mm. your life? It takes a lot of time management. When people talk about work-life balance, I think it's, it's an issue of time management. It's an issue of structuring your time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was talking about... Let's so say you're a lead CEO you, and you're a woman yes. of a big corporation. Yes. You, you see... You won't have the time, I tell as you. As a woman, as you, you make the time. As a woman and your top CEO, nobody necessarily requires you to be in the office at 8 o'clock. If, if you left the office at 11 p.m. and you got home at maybe 11.30 or, or, or 12 a.m., and maybe you had a light meal or maybe you slept at 1.30. You know, if you get to the office at 8 a.m., you probably will not be, you know, functioning. Perhaps maybe you, you know, you wake up at 6 a.m., whatever, you go to the gym. Get, you know, because the exercise helps with the mental ag agility. There are ways in which you have to structure your day. You have to structure your day, structure your time so that you can be e e efficient. It's, it's about time management, spending time on the most productive things for your business. That's why you have staff. There's strategic things that you should deal with and other operational issues that your staff should, should, should deal with. It's about time management. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so mm. now you have to manage the time. So you just yeah. have to behave like a, a woman as well. <laughs> yes. So that's what you're telling me. Yes. So you don't have to behave like a man. You don't. In, no, in no, many no. respects. That's why we're different. God made us But in a corporate yes. world, yes. you really need to shove it in, in the ribs of the men. No, because no. just to give them the stick and tell them that really, no. I'm also up to it. I totally, you, I totally disagree. You I'm, don't have to behave like a I'm man. Not, I don't advocate for you to compete with anybody but yourself. I don't have to, I don't want to behave like a man. I'm a woman. Mm. I, you know, I, I can present my authority and my, my credibility in a feminine way. A man doesn't have that privilege. You don't know how to be feminine. You don't have to know how to be feminine. But if I'm, you know, I'm demonstrating to you that I know my stuff, but I'm also doing it in a way that demonstrates my, some feminine, femininity, that, that makes you curious about me. I don't want to be like a man. I'm not a man. Mm. I'm a woman. And I'm very proudly a woman. Okay. Um, this question about how women mm. sometimes don't tend to be very good managers. Not they don't tend to be good MDs. That's a difference. Man management, I mean, human management. Ah, because and you scream and shout, right? Yeah, the relation. Or they, okay. or sometimes they are too uptight, too straight, etc. I've had mixed experiences. Some, yeah. some have very good experiences mm. as well. Mm. How do we make sure that the experience that people take? Um, in their lives, not mm. take home necessarily, mm. is always the best about the mm. top female corporate person they met. Mm. So you're talking about how what, how women can what, be less emotional, or I, I'm trying to understand in terms of how they need to relate with yeah. their top executives. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, again, to get the best out of their yeah, yeah, it's it that that is the leadership issue then, because you know, as a CEO or as a top female en entrepreneur, you actually have a leadership responsibility. You're actually People are looking up to you, whether you like it or not, right? You're coaching people, you're mentoring people. Um, you know, people are, are, are looking for something from you. So uh, as a result, you know, you, you have to watch yourself, what you say, how you say it, when you say it. 
because all around you people are looking to you and if they don't see certain qualities in mm. you mm. they may disrespect you 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 motivate them less their productivity in, your, in the workplace will not be what what you know um, what it's supposed to be but if I have a leader who I really look up to, I really admire, inspires me, I know he's committed, he's understanding, will say, okay, look, I'm not, you know, I know you just had a baby, so you don't have to be here until, you know, you, you, you go home at 3 p.m., you know, but please just check that email at 7 p.m. because I'm going to send it to you. You know, people will, people respect and regard that. So you have to realize your leadership responsibilities in the way that you, you know, um, that you are, that you're, you're really coaching people as well. You're not just a CEO, it's, it's, it's not a title. It comes with certain mentorship and um, responsibilities as well. Mm. Yeah. People are watching us who mm. have their dream and all these things you're talking about yeah. makes them uh, um, salivate and think that yeah. it's, it's good being yeah. a top CEO. How yeah. do they start the whole, bi the whole idea of having their own enterprises, starting their business? Starting your business. Um, <laughs> so many ways. Okay. Um, if, if, if you want to start your own business, first of all, just realize that it's not on the bed of roses. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of hard work to get to um, the top. Um, many of the people that we read about now, um, if, you, if you saw them 30 years ago, you probably wouldn't even look twice at them, you know, with perhaps, you know, holes in their shoes or, 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 or whatever. It has been a journey. In a business strategy, I would say, is a business journey. Um, so it starts with a dream. It starts with querying that dream, tearing it apart, putting it back together, and tweaking it, making it perfect, and thinking about all the features of that business dream. You know, what is it, uh, what will it entail? What's the big picture? And how can I break down the big picture into little small deliberate steps that I make today um, to make that vision happen? And above all, you know, have mentors, have coaches, um, have business values and personal values that will drive how you recruit, mm. who you recruit. You don't just bring anybody into your business. You have to bring in people that you know that you can nurture, people who buy into the dream, who will be assets in your business, not liabilities onto you, right? So um, it's answering that innate call within you, but working that innate call, thinking deeply about it, and uh, so that you know, it comes out. And along the journey, you know, just like a call, then it becomes a jewel. Mm. Yeah. And as we get towards uh, the wrap up uh, end mm. of our interview, yes. uh, in your article, Dare to Dream, or Dare to Be a Dreamer? Yeah. Okay. Always be a dreamer. Okay. You yeah. mentioned uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey mm -hmm. and uh, Nicole Lamatefio and yeah. the others. And in Ghana, we've got to talk about Elizabeth Villas and, and yeah. the other entrepreneurs we have yeah. at the micro level, etc. Um, what do you think ma makes those people stand out? I think what makes them... Um, what, what makes them achieve it? Yeah, I'll talk about Nicole because I know her personally. Mm. Oprah, I don't I know from afar. Um, Nicole was, you know, in, 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 in the States. She was, I think at that time she was studying for her master's and she'd, you know, she'd watch Sex in the City and she was just thinking, you know, what would, it, what would an African sex in the city look like? And um, it was something that she just couldn't let go of. So she went to her professor, she was, I think she was studying com in communications and... Um, said well just get writing you know start a script how do I do that you know she was well, said you know the power of Google she started to Google how to write a script all of that kind of stuff you know and for years and years and she was just writing you know writing you know the storyline for an African city and what it would look like you know and she carried on working you know as, as normal but that dream stayed with her and when she couldn't stand it anymore it was like now we have to I have to actually find the actors the actresses you know gather you know um, the money my savings whatever to actually make it into a reality i'm sure there were times when nicole thought forget this you know, it's just a silly idea silly me gosh you know uh, african city who's going to watch it and then also i didn't even have enough money i had to even put it on youtube gosh you know what a silly idea whatever but she did it and everybody's now calling her you know bt atlanta everybody's you know pe people want to see season two and they're saying i like this vision here's the money you know i can you know can i buy into this vision can i be a, can i partner with you she came through tried and trusted she had the audacity of hope as obama put it she had a hope she pursued it you know just through many years and you know that's really what i would say that's what that's why i said always be a dreamer dream but also see it through don't be lazy about it it, it it's it's a lot of work mm. but 
your your convictions must drive you even in business okay just yeah. like anybody mm. um, females also can have their, their turns when when it comes to being at the top what can bring a, a top female entrepreneur mm. down mm. so many things the economy can bring her down okay. um, a bad marriage can bring her down uh, um, stress and anxiety can bring her down so I advocate for a lot of balance in life um, work-life balance there's certain things that I don't take for granted you know my ex exercise because for me it helps with my go away <laughs> it helps with my mental um, a, 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 a agility you know food your, your nutrition the, there are certain foods that you that you that you eat that give you the nutrients that perhaps you know just help you to perform better all of those kind of things read that there there are so many things um, that, 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 that we can do to enhance our productivity to ensure that we have balance you know, you, it's not everything that as a, as, a, as a woman that, you know, you have to do yourself. Outsource certain tasks. You know, you don't have to be the one that goes to the market, you know, twice a week or whatever. Okay, if, if you have a driver, can you send the driver? Or, or can you send, you know? So, um, yes, and, you know, have the right partner. Somebody who is interested in your, um, who wants to see the best out, you know, in you. Who buys into your vision and wants to be a partner with you in the home to ensure that that dream becomes a reality. Make sure that you're also... A good partner as well that you know you're also helping your partner to achieve his dreams um, um, as, as, as well mm. yeah so, so there's so many features yeah okay and it is said that women yeah. are in entrepreneurship just to bring out the joy of it and bring yeah. out the joy in it etc yes w what's that all about well I I think my, my latest blog article which is on the website the olden thing website is um it's called in the business of bringing joy. I think what we don't realize is that every single one of us, whatever it is that we do, we're in the business of bringing joy. Somebody is watching, you know, is watching today, and they're learning from your program. That's because of what you do, what you've chosen to do. If you go out and you decide, you know, you buy um, papaya or whatever, you know, you fill somebody's stomach. You're in the business of bringing joy to somebody, even if it was just that ten minute, those ten minutes, and they're eating their lunch. As a business coach, I'm in the business of bringing joy because I am helping somebody to achieve their dreams. Whatever it is that you're doing, even as a driver, even though I'm paying you to be my driver, but you're alleviating my stress in one way or the other because maybe whilst you're driving me, I'm working at, at, you know, at the back of my, I'm, I'm preparing for that meeting that I have later on in that day. In many ways, you're alleviating my stress. We need to understand that um, whatever it is that we're, that we're doing, in the business of bringing joy and that should motivate us to ensure that we are constantly delivering service excellence product excellence that our goods and services um, always um, bring joy to our clientele mm. yeah. okay uh, any social platforms uh, people can reach you on? yes um, we're on Twitter um, Alden's name Facebook Alden's name web page Alden's name Instagram right mm. Alden's name so all right we're everywhere. Okay, once you say <laughs> Alden Slane, I know many of you, because of the accent, you can hear very well. Alden's, Alden Slane. Please, no more Ghanaians, listen. A L L D E N S. Alden's Lane, like no more lane. Yeah. You know, these days we're having um, lanes being created for us based on a policy <laughs> by the president, etc. So, okay. um, Ruka, thanks for passing through. And Thank Ruka is. Um, a business person does business advisory consultancy management etc she is an entrepreneur advises people coaching people and telling people this is what they need to do especially females mm -hmm. as well you know, we love all of you as well and you're doing a good Thank job you. thanks Thank very, very much. much i hope to have a lot of, uh, some breakfast with you i would love and, that and jenny's here too yes. so. <laughs> all right. chris how are Thank you, you. All right, cool. So we're, we're hoping that we can have you again sometime mm. in the studio, then we can okay. have a lot more chat on this. I subject. think there's a Women's Entrepreneurs Week sometime in November. So I hope you're going to have a lot of every day that week. Make sure you have women entrepreneurs on your show just to encourage us okay. to offer the world our best. Get in touch with us. <laughs> let's, do, let's do that for our women entrepreneurs. Yeah. All okay. right, so uh, that's it. But uh, what's up next is a National Health Insurance Scheme. And uh, we're always talking about how it is important for us to make sure that we get access to health care, etc. And um, Abigail Adbunkin, she has been interacting with uh, uh, the ordinary Ghanaian. But um, we'll try to look at those footages, show it at news decks for you. But right now, we'll have to wrap up the show. And uh, 
thanks for passing by and thanks Thank also you. for joining me always get interactive we have um, on our page join us on tv on facebook and also that same phrase will take you to a handle i join us on tv thanks for joining me for the show today same time tomorrow please join me again Bye -bye.